time. It's what separates us from the past, but can it really distance us from the horrors of history? Hello, everyone. Today we're journeying back to a moment where time seemed to stand still for all the wrong reasons. A morbid contest during Second World War that will defy your understanding of human decency. This is not your typical history lesson. It's more of a haunting tale that serves as a severe warning for the future. So buckle up, it's going to be a heavy ride. Second World War, spanning from 1939 to 1945, remains one of the most consequential conflicts in history. It involved the majority of the world's great powers and led to significant political, social, and economic changes globally. Two opposing alliances, the Allies and the Axis, clashed on multiple fronts in varied terrains and climates. The causes of the war ranged from the unresolved grievances from First World War economic depressions, the rise of totalitarian regimes, and territorial ambitions. It culminated in an estimated 50 to 85 million fatalities, making it the deadliest conflict in human history. Among the myriad atrocities of Second World War, some episodes, while lesser known, remain deeply unsettling. The contest to kill 100 people using a sword is one such episode. Originating from the Sino-Japanese front, it's a horrifying tale of two Japanese officers, Lieutenants Toshiaki Mukai and Tsuyoshi Noda, who allegedly competed in a morbid contest to see who could kill 100 people using a sword first. The two officers central to this grim episode were Lieutenants Toshiaki Mukai and Tsuyoshi Noda of the Imperial Japanese Army. Both were young men in their 20s, products of a military culture that emphasized unwavering loyalty to the emperor and the nation. Mukai and Noda were not particularly high-ranking officials, but their actions would attract international attention and scorn. The contest to kill 100 people using a sword is believed to have taken place during the Japanese advance in China, particularly around the city of Nanking, now Nanjing, in 1937. The city witnessed the infamous Rape of Nanking, during which tens of thousands of Chinese civilians and disarmed soldiers were killed, and countless women were raped by the Japanese forces. The sword contest is considered a subset of these broader atrocities. According to available accounts, the contest was carried out as a series of individual sorties by each officer. Armed with their military swords, Nukai and Noda would leave their encampment to engage with both armed and unarmed Chinese. It is unclear whether their victims were solely military combatants or also included civilians. Reports suggest a mix of both. Each officer would keep track of his score, which was the number of people killed by his sword. The competition was reportedly informal, but known among other soldiers and their superiors. The counts for the contest varied due to inconsistent reporting. Initial reports suggest that both officers surpassed the original goal of 100 kills, which led to an extension of the contest. Japanese newspapers at the time, such as the Tokyo Nichai Nichi Shimbun, covered the contest in a sensationalized manner. The media treated it as a spectacle, a display of the officers' prowess and bravery, thus adding a layer of public involvement and engagement with the contest. In a war where numbers meant success and public opinion mattered, the media's role was double-edged. On one hand, they contributed to the dehumanization of the enemy by reducing human lives to mere numbers in a contest. On the other hand, the media archives later served as evidence of war crimes, shedding light on the disturbing events that transpired. The contest to kill 100 people using a sword stands as a blatant violation of the Geneva Conventions, a series of international treaties designed to establish humanitarian laws of war. Killing unarmed civilians and prisoners of war is strictly against these rules, and even if the victims were combatants, the manner of their killing could hardly be justified under any standard rules of engagement. The contest's very premise the deliberate targeting of individuals to increase a kill count, 
represents a complete antithesis to the principles the conventions were founded on, the humane treatment of all individuals caught in the web of war, regardless of their role or nationality. While the psychology of wartime behavior is complex, involving factors like propaganda, dehumanization of the enemy, and the pressures of the battlefield, this episode shows how easily ethical barriers can crumble. The contest epitomizes how the very norms that underpin civil society can be shattered when filtered through the lens of war. The contest to kill 100 people using a sword was overshadowed by the sheer scale of atrocities committed during Second World War, including other large-scale incidents like the rape of Nanking. However, post-war, both Toshiaki Mukai and Tsuyoshi Noda were put on trial for war crimes. The exact charges varied, but they generally involved crimes against humanity and violations of the laws of war. Unfortunately, the sensationalized contest itself was not specifically the focus of the trials, but rather a part of a larger list of crimes that they were accused of. Both officers were eventually found guilty and executed. The post-war climate in Japan was one of devastation and self-examination. While Japan formally renounced war with its post-war constitution, the nation has struggled with its wartime past. Public opinion in Japan on war crimes committed by the Imperial Japanese Army has varied, ranging from denial to deep shame. The specific episode of the sword-killing contest has been a subject of debate in Japan, with some nationalists downplaying or even denying the event, while others acknowledge it as a dark chapter in the nation's history that should be faced squarely. Governmental responses have also varied. There have been formal apologies and statements acknowledging war crimes, although the coverage of specific incidents like this contest has been limited. Textbooks and educational material have at times glossed over or minimized such war crimes, sparking controversy and criticisms, both nationally and internationally. Internationally, this gruesome contest has often been cited as an example of the widespread war crimes committed by the Imperial Japanese Army for countries that suffered under Japanese occupation or aggression, such as China and Korea. This episode adds another layer to the long-standing grievances and calls for formal apologies and reparations. Among academics and human rights advocates, the contest has been dissected as a case study in war psychology and the depths to which ethical norms can be distorted in the heat of conflict. It serves as a cautionary tale and a grim reminder of the need for rigorous international laws governing the conduct of war and the treatment of civilians and prisoners. However, it's crucial to recognize that the global community's response has been inconsistent. While some war crimes get more attention and lead to international action, others like this contest, despite their horror, often risk being overlooked or forgotten. That's the grim story of the contest to kill 100 people using a sword. It serves as a shocking reminder of the depths humanity can reach during conflict. Thank you for staying through this heavy topic. If you find this important, please like, share, and subscribe for more. Let's work together to prevent such atrocities in the future.